Okay, Mishle 1121, and this is one of these psukim that you just read it and you're like, what is it saying? Okay, <laughs> Yad liyad lo yinake, lo yinake ra, I think I'm telling you this comment there, Vizera tadikim nimlat. <laughs> Anyone want to try this? And I don't blame you if no one wants to try translating. Uh, sure. Hand to hand, you won't... Uh... Um, I don't know what Yanaka is, but Ra, Yanaka of evil. Okay, yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure, and we'll have to see, I'm pretty sure that Ra here is, uh, that all, or most of the Farshim interpret it as an Ish Ra, as a bad person. So a bad person, you know what Lo Yanaka is? Clean? Yeah, will not be um, uh, cl clean, uh, cleansed, I guess, or like, uh, I think the... Um, uh, common translation is uh, is vindicated, okay. Meaning because it's a uh, naki is like if you go to based in and you uh, you know you get off like scot free, you know. So that's like you know, okay. Um, okay, so vizera uh, tadikim nimlat. Is that like escape? Yes. Or yeah. For the offspring of of uh, tadikim, uh, tadikim, yeah. Uh, escape. Okay, let's translate it like that. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more. Okay, so Sadigon says, and I don't even know how half of these things are going to be translated. Okay, uh, 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 how, uh, like if I'm reading it correctly, ke his hapech yad liyad lo yinake ra hara. Okay, I, I ke his hapech like one who reverses himself hand to hand. I don't know what that means. Lo yinake hara. Uh, the evil one will not be uh, vindicated. Vizera um, uh, But the, yeah, fine. So he looks like he only really translates, uh, I mean, really substantially changed the, changes the first half. Okay. I, I don't know what it is. We'll leave it there. there. Targum Ksuvim says, Demoshit yid aida al chavre. Uh, one uh, who extends his hand uh, against his fellow, lo mizdake min bishta, will not be, oh, exonerated is another word they use. Vindicated, exonerated, okay. Exonerated, um, will not be exonerated from evil. Vizara de tzadiki misbreak. Um, but the uh, offspring of the tzadikim will be redeemed. Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, art scroll. From hand to hand, evil will not be exonerated. Okay, but the offspring of the righteous will escape. Okay, that's that's pretty close to what we have, a little bit more eloquent than ours. Living Nach, I don't get what they're doing. Hand to hand, exclamation. Evildoers will not go unpunished, yet the seed of the righteous will escape. Okay, so I'm going to delete that because I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, and then Alter has an interesting thing, okay? He says, count on it. <laughs> the evil will not go scot-free. But the seed of the righteous escapes. So you look at uh, his footnotes, count on it, literally hand to hand. This appears to be a gesture of shaking hands in order to guarantee something. So he's learning it like a handshake, like um, like uh, two people's hands, hand to hand, you know? Uh, and he's saying it means like a guarantee. Okay, I don't know. It doesn't seem like he has evidence for that. Uh, it seems like it's just as much of a guess as, as ours is because he doesn't like say, oh, you know, ancient Middle East uh, scrolls, you know, he doesn't do his altar thing, okay? Yeah, so that's our pasuk. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so obviously the question we have to ask here uh, is like, what does hand to hand even mean? Like, how do you read that into the pasuk? Okay, and that's like something we have to take us. Uh, uh, what do you call a stance on? And it's funny thing here that like you know ordinarily I'm very much in favor of a conservative. Uh, reading of um, of the Pasuk in the sense of like, don't make wild guesses and then like rely on them. But for something like this, where like, it seems clear that that no one really knows what's going on. I feel like more open to wild guesses. So like, like just, you know, whatever we can do, we can do. Yeah, Isaiah. Is there anyone who says it's referring to Nintila Sidaim? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it says like cleansing and you know, yeah, right, right. That's funny. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. That's a, that's a great association, right? Yeah, uh, I, it, it reminds me of laundering money. <laughs> I think that's maybe your association because of a certain show you might have been watching. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, I, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 
Okay, I mean, I, I, I hear it, right? You're talking about cleansing something that's being passed from hand to hand. I, I hear it. I hear it. Um, <laughs> All right, after the questions, I'll give you my idea on the long run. <laughs> okay, now, yeah. let, me, let me just uh, give you a little, like, uh, guidance here, is that I don't know if laundering, I, I don't think laundering money was a thing back then, but there might have been something else that, like, some criminal thing that is, like, exchanged from hand to hand that maybe you can, uh, you know, uh, find a shop for. Yeah, Zach? Um, when we go into the answering phase, maybe it would be helpful to clarify if we see hand to hand as either the same as offspring, the opposite of offspring, or something uh, okay, completely yeah. independent of okay. offspring. All right, so l l let's do this then. So, um, uh, is Yad Liyad um, the opposite? of anything in the second half, right? And I assume you phrase your question that way because not being exonerated versus escaping, that seems like a clear opposite. And then Ra and Tadim seems like a clear opposite. Okay, very, very good question. You know what, by the way, before, before we go on, I did not actually uh, do a search and just see if the phrase appears anywhere else in Tanakh. I assume it doesn't because I didn't see any of the Mepharshan quote that. All right, let's see what happens. Yad, Yad. It's being slow because of Zoom. This is not an Al Hator problem. This is a Zoom problem. All right, well, we'll come back to it later. Okay, yeah. All right, other questions? Um, wait, I'll, just to uh, like complete that question is, yeah. is it, I also think it's theoretical. Like I wanted to just cover the basis that it could also be the same as offspring. Yeah. Meaning like, you know, it could, the fact, the fact that it's talking about offspring in the second half might indicate that it's talking about that in the first half. Okay. Um, also on escaping like Nimali. Yeah. So is that implying that they're escaping from something from their own action or like, cause I would assume it's like from the right. same thing as in the first half, but why would we assume a Sadiq is in the same situation as someone who's with Ra? Okay. Uh, so, so let's see, let's, I'm just trying to think whether we should break that down into separate questions here. So um, escape in the second half seems to imply that they were in danger or in, in a bad situation uh, like the first half. But why, right? Uh, why, why would we assume that about the offspring of the tzaddikim? Yeah, okay. So it's interesting that offspring, meaning like we're very used to talking about the cause and effect of of a tzaddik's actions. Yeah. But now we're talking about someone who may or may not be a tzaddik. Like why right. should there be an impact on someone else? Okay, right. That's a good question. Okay, so on the other hand, I'm saying on the other hand, because like in the previous question, we were kind of assuming that like, you know, why would they be in danger? But on the other hand, why should we assume that they wouldn't be in danger, you know? Um, so why, uh, like, why are, do the uh, offspring of the tzaddikim escape? They're not necessarily uh, tzaddikim, okay? And just to, um, in case anyone's thinking this, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not sure. I was going to say, yeah, uh, never mind. I was going to make a linguistic thing, yeah. Okay, that, that, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, Isaiah? Are the Zara Tzadikim causing Ra or are they affected by Ra? Are they causing Ra? Okay, that's a good question also. Yeah, are the Zara, are the offspring of Tzadikim uh, causing? Oh, you mean when you say, uh, meaning the Ra that they're escaping from? Yeah. Yeah, were right. they the cause of it or are they just yeah. being affected by it? All right, I'm going to start off with a question. Regarding the, the bad that the offspring of the tzaddikim are escaping from, uh, are they causing it? Or how do you phrase the second part? Or, it's, or being it affected by it? You're saying like no, a byproduct almost? 
like rather than it being like a direct cause and effect relationship from their own action. Yeah, yeah. are they escaping from their own raw or are they escaping from the effects of someone else's raw? Okay, so is it something they they caused or is it something that was caused by someone else? Yeah. Um, I have a clarification question followed by a, a question. Sure. Is is there for sure a um, a subject in the first half um, or could it theoretically be um, oh wait can we yeah I'm gonna uh, go here so we can okay. yeah uh, could it theoretically be like uh, hand to hand will not be clean cleansed from bad meaning like is there for yeah, sure a person that could be first? okay yeah uh, so maybe we can track that as it yeah so so let me, i'm gonna add this here also um is hand to hand some sort of idiom or is it the subject of the pasuk okay um i.e hand to hand will not be cleansed cleansed from bad is that how you you're proposing to be read yeah exactly which would yeah. kind of put person the word person in brackets in our pasuk because it may or may not Need right. to be present. Yeah, let's let's actually do that anyway because that's not in the puzzle. Yeah. Um. And also, I, yeah, you go. Sorry, just to finish the thought is that if it is a subject, I mean, if if the if there is a person, then who is this person um, in relationship to the tzaddik? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me just uh, expand this a little bit here. Um, uh, if. Yeah, uh, let's do, all right, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna make that into a separate question. If, so who is, so if, if, if Ra is an Ish Ra, who is this person in relation to the Tzaddik? And so, maybe uh, to complete that is like, why, why, why are we referring to them so vaguely? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Isaiah. Oh, that's an old man. What? Can you, oh, old, old hand. Man. Oh, okay. Can, can you also ask, like, what exactly will he not be cleansed from? Yes, we did not ask that. Okay, so what does lo yinake mean? What and in what sense? Sorry, what will he not be cleansed from? Will he not be cleansed from? In what sense? Why not? Right. Also, the opposite the of, of escaping. Like, how yeah. are we supposed to be reading that with the like other hand of the pasuk? Hand. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, what, what do you mean? How, how, how is the not escaping? Like I'm saying I assume that like the you know kara is in the same like we're supposed to be reading that of on the opposite end of the nimali. So I'm saying, how did the ah, two right. like go together? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, let's see. Um, and I'm gonna add that to this question. How is this the opposite of lo yinake? You know, the other possibility, by the way, of yad. Okay, hold on. Maybe this is just the idiot. Hmm. Okay. One possibility of how to read it is like the almost like the, the derech of Yad Liyad will not escape Ra, you know, but maybe another way it will escape Ra. Like Yad Liyad is like a description of some sort of like, you know, um, thing. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah? What kind of Ra are we talking about? Yeah. What kind of raw are we talking about? Did we not say that? I guess we didn't say that. Um, yeah. Uh, what does raw mean in this context? What kind? Well, did we ask what what allows the Zara to be into escape? Yeah, I think so. Uh, why why do they escape? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do think we probably have to ask uh, who is the audience. 
and uh, and then what is the practical application is going to largely depend on how we read the first half. I have a question. Another question: If an offspring, if an offspring, uh, I'm sorry, if an offspring of a tzaddik is uh, ishra, will it yeah. affect him? Uh, right. Okay. Let's add that to this question here. Uh, what if the offspring is Ra, right? Then which, which half of the Pasuk would you, which half of the Pasuk would apply, right? That's a, that's a real question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun over there. That was my idea, Hans. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I, I think we probably got the main questions. All right, let's, uh, and I, by the way, I really, I mean, I, I usually don't come into this with, an, with any ideas. I really don't have ideas here. So we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get something. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's think now. I'm going to add here also, um, what is the scenario? I think this is one of those, one of those, was the scenario questions. No, oh, so get me. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll go ahead. Okay. It's, it's going to be a little, uh, a little, wild okay e even for me oh um, wow <laughs> okay because, mostly because i'm still unsure how to express this point i'm still trying to find a way maybe yeah. you can help me this okay. is this is where i ask for help okay um maybe you can say that like for the first half of the pasta like, it, it's interesting that he doesn't use the term ish like ishra Okay. It keeps it a little vague over there. Yeah. Maybe you could say that, like, but for now, I'm just going to use ish and ish just because I have no other way to express this case. So just, okay. you know, it's, so maybe you could say that, like, an individual who, you know, who's bad, you know, whatever that means, um, you know, maybe like, like, with, with with him who's who he 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 just has like he kind of he's kind of screwed like it's gonna be very difficult for him to you know be cleansed from his e evil evil ways okay you know even if he tries to you know um you know go through many different different hands and i think hand over here means like other people's like control over him you know, or maybe like other people's like, uh, like maybe like a household or like, uh, I don't know, like, or like other, other families or whatever, like maybe another town or whatever. If he's like someone who has like a, like a bad, See, that's the thing. I don't know. I'm trying to find a way to say a bad persona without saying it's a, it's a persona, you know, it's just like, maybe he has some sort of negative influence or something that he just can't get rid of or something. I mean, he has to dicks. He has to like figure it out internally versus, you know, um, you know, because if he doesn't figure that out, then no one can really help him. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. I'm. I'm. Maybe. I'm. Maybe either. I'm. I don't know if I'm. I don't feel like I'm not getting your approach. Okay, fine. Let, let me start with the second half of the puzzle because I think I have All that right. clear. All right. Okay. All right. The second half of the puzzle is is very very simple. Um. Even if you if you have an offspring who's who um who from a tzaddik, right? Like like um th that offspring will always have some sort of like uh like like natural inclination towards his ancestors, right? Okay. Yeah. Because like you know it's it's a model they right. they look up to him right e even though he may not be tzaddik even if he's a Russia. Yeah. Right. Right. Because even even a Russia who who came from a tzaddik at least. At the very least, he has some sort of recourse that he can go back to. 
right you know, you know it's easier for him to like you know escape from russia okay yeah you know, that's right, what that's i'm trying to get at okay that's but, like, good. The, right. the first half of the puzzle like like it, it might be that it's it's going to be impossible almost impossible for him to escape from russia if he doesn't have some sort of like recourse like an ancestor or or maybe if he hasn't done some internal digging into exactly what's causing him to act a certain way yeah so i think what needs so the i like the second half a lot uh i think what and a good example of that by the way is like um is like uh you know the way Hazal depict like asov you know uh that like he went on the wrong path but he certainly had good model role models that he could make recourse to if, if you know as, as uh uh you know and and he was also like inclined towards Okay, fine. But I think the two areas you're going to need to, to work on in your approach is getting a clear idea of what Yad Liad means. And then also you can't go too far in this idea because you don't want to say that someone, you know, not everyone, ha most people don't, are not offspring of Tzadikim. And you don't want to say that people who are not offspring of Tzadikim are hopeless. So the question is either going to be like, how bad or what type of bad you have to be to, to, to fall into the first category of the Pasuk. And then, like, how does the normal person who has some sort of raw get out of it? And why doesn't the why can't the East Ra do that? You know, oh, like I don't think it literally means an offspring of a tzaddik. I just mean like an offspring of like a role model. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, like, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. That's a good good half approach. Uh, yeah, Isaiah. Yeah. So I think it's a little different than how Ariel's learning it, but maybe what the pasuk is saying is that like. There's sort of no, as, as soon as people view you as like related to a certain evil thing that happens, like uh, a hate or like some sort of scandal or something like that. Yeah. So there's no, there's no sort of way to, to like undo that in people's minds. Like you can't, even if you try to like shift the blame or like distance yourself, you're always going to be like sort of people's perception of you is going to be tainted by that, yeah. by that um sort of way that by having been associated with this evil action right. or events that occurred. Right. But in terms of punishment, I think the last part of the Pasuk saying like people who come from like good lineage, they are often able to escape the actual okay. consequences, meaning right. like the din or the courts or whatever, like they're able to get out of it. Yeah. But everyone's gonna, everyone who is like associated with an evil act is sort of always associated. Even if you try to distance yourself from it, it doesn't okay. really work. That's also a good approach. And now the question I would say that the next step in developing that idea would be, um, would be, so what is the puzzle telling you practically? Like, we can't choose if we are, if we have a good lineage. So, so the question is like, what is that? I think, I think yeah. it would be like, don't get involved in rock. Right. Yeah. But, but why does it even need to say the second half then? Like the second half has to be adding something, right? Like, and, and you don't want them to walk away with, it, with the message of, I can get involved in raw if I have a good lineage, you know, because then I can get away with it. But uh, I, I agree with the, the, uh, the observations you're making. And I think it's a fruitful way to uh, take the puzzle. I also have a similar, um, similar approach to the puzzle, a half, half approach to the puzzle. Yeah. Wait, right. off of, based off of that idea, that would be really yeah. interesting. Does anyone learn it as like, almost like a, like, I know there are psukim about like a judge. Like, I think we did that in high school together. Yeah. Um, so if you're learning it from more like, I guess, like not even legal, but like from an outside perspective of uh, uh -huh. people coming in, then it's- Oh, that's interesting. Okay. That uh, okay. Way. So, so let, let, let's take that and develop it, right? In other words, the puzzle is not addressed to someone that, and telling them not to be involved in evil. The puzzle is talking to someone who's in a position of judgment and to recognize that there are two biases that can, that, that can affect a person. Uh, there's a, a bias that, um, there's gotta be formal names for these fallacies, I'm sure. But like, if someone has, does something bad that can stain their reputation, and even if they actually change and no longer warrant being looked at that way, people will still like view them that way you know and that's that is not necessarily right i mean yeah like if they had, you know you should definitely be careful but there is such a thing as chuva you know people turn over uh, a new leaf and like you can't you know you should not um allow this to cloud your judgment okay and on the other side you know there's another bias where where someone uh will do something bad but because they come from a good family you'll minimize the bad that they do but that has nothing to do with what they did like what they did is their own actions, you know, yeah, so you can't let these biases uh, affect you. Especially on the second half, I think like it's 
not even just in terms of bias, but like when Isaiah was speaking about like actual consequences, I think that like it just literally wouldn't be like the like right consequence if someone comes right. from a good family and then like let's say if like the judge or cop or whatever is going to be bribed like it doesn't right. speak of bribing but it's a good like you know don't be don't have like you know rosy colored glasses or anything exactly yeah yeah and like you, you see this happens all the time with people who are getting into some scandal that involves harm to other people you know like it's one thing if, if they get in trouble and then you you let them off and then it was just a one-time thing. But if they're going to continue to do bad, then this is a, a it could be a destructive thing, you know? And it could be destructive for uh, keeping this guy with a bad, uh, a stained reputation if he could be doing good. So the only thing, I, I let, let's just finish this one off because I think this is a really good idea. All we need to do is figure out Yad Liyad. <laughs> Yad Liyad lo yinakera. I was thinking of like at, of it as like shit trying to like shift blame or sort of distance yourself. Yeah. Like sort of, I, I wonder if know. that is I, I'm I'm totally guessing here. I wonder if that's like how you could read Sadigon. Like one who oh wait, hold on a second. Maybe I misunderstood you. Say again, shifting blame like or like there's no way to distance yourself from the raw. Meaning like even if you like switch hands, then you're not gonna distance yourself from the raw, something like that the the chain of hands cannot get long enough to distance yourself from uh -huh. the rock. right right yeah like you, you, yeah yeah I, I hear that okay yeah yeah i'm look i'm totally fine just chalking up to an idiom and then saying this is the main idea i just want to write down a summary of this so we can uh review it because I, I stopped that practice and i regret it <clears throat> um so isaiah and rifki combo deal uh, which is um the pasuk is uh addressing someone who is in a position of judgment of judging, of judging, and warning them of two biases. A, don't be biased, biased against someone who who did Ra and uh, and refuse to acknowledge that they can change. And B, don't be biased against the offspring of Sadiqim, Sadiqim, thinking and letting letting them get off scot free. That that's Scott with the one T, right? That's how Alter said it. Scott, yeah, Scott. Oh, it's, I guess it's a hyphen. Yeah, scot free. Okay, good. All right, I like that idea. Okay, good. All right, and maybe we can come back to it and, and, and brush it up. I think that's a solid idea. Yeah, Zach. Um. So yeah, I had an alternative approach. Um. I was going to look at um, the, I was going to translate Ra as flaw. Okay. Um, and I was going to look at this Pusuk as taking up the topic of uh, passing on generational flaws. Okay. Um, oh, that's so, actually very good. Yad Liad and Zara. That's a nice move. Um, and so, thank you. And so, um, hand to hand uh here is that like you're learning one from the other you know yeah. like parent to child yeah. um and it's basically saying the first half that if a person just thinks that like oh there's a new generation they'll not have this flaw that wasn't you know worked on just because it's a new generation then like you're mistaken like this flaw will stay there you know and you'll yeah. see the same mistake that was uh, mm -hmm. made by the parent being made yeah. by the kid yeah um, but the offspring of the tzaddikim will be able to escape that meaning even if uh like let's say there is some flaw that this tzaddik has the offspring will be able to escape it and so i'm going to explain for a moment why in order to also explain what is the puzzle coming to tell us Right, because um, just to, just to, I just want to ask a question, just assuming that you're going to answer it, I just want to highlight the question, though, because the question is, <clears throat> if this is truly a, um, a, a human tendency that, like, parents pass on their flaws to their offspring, why would, why would that not work with the tzaddikim? Like, right. like, if a tzaddik has a flaw, then presumably he would, uh, he, he would pass it on. Right, exactly. Yeah. So basically, he I think he's coming to show that there is essentially a way out, which is that even I meaning obviously the ideal is the parent 
conquers the flaw themselves and then passes on no flaw. But let's say we're, I mean, acknowledging that human beings have flaws and they're not gonna, they're often not conquering all the flaws. Yeah. Um, a tzaddik hmm. um, will pass on, by, by virtue of being a tzaddik, he's passing on a quality, which is the pursuit of improvement. Right. And by passing on this quality, his kids will seek to improve themselves and yeah. eventually escape that flaw, which they also got. Okay. Whereas that's... a regular person will just inherit the flaw without inheriting any okay, that's idea really of self-improvement. And so they won't be able to escape it. Okay, and so what really the good. is. So go ahead. Uh, I was going to go to now the, the practical applications. Okay, so uh, let me just interject with one thing that uh, this just this connects to a puzzle that we were doing. Um, we actually did it in this year last year, uh, but we just did it in our morning shear uh, last week. Uh, I think this is the most quoted puzzle in Mishle, one of them. Uh, uh, train the youth or inaugurate the youth according to his way. Uh, even when he becomes old, he will not deviate from it. So, um, and inaugurate is like Hanukkah, you know, Hamizbea, Hanukkah, Sabayis. So, um, Sean had an, uh, an approach. He quoted something that they used to teach us in grad school, uh, which is an uh, 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 educational philosophy uh, statement. You'll like this, Rifki. <laughs> um, uh, I just have to say it right because I always say it wrong in my head. Don't prepare the road for the child, prepare the child for the road. Okay, meaning preparing the child, preparing the road for the child is a mistake that a lot of parents make, which is they try to, um, to like pave the path for their, their child and like remove all obstacles. The problem though, is that the kid will never learn to actually deal with what is thrown their way and deal with life obstacles and challenges. So instead what you gotta do is you gotta prepare a child for the road, which is to give them all the tools that they need that they're going to uh, need in order to be able to solve problems and, uh, uh, that they encounter in life. So that was the idea for that puzzle. But then uh, the way I would I hear it in what Zach is saying is that Sadiqim might pass on flaws, but the other thing they're passing on is this the, is the the drive to constantly introspect and work on themselves and do tshuva, and not just the drive, but the the tools to be able to work on themselves. And because they pass that on to their kids, then maybe they won't be able to maybe the tzaddik parent will not be able to get rid of this flaw in time to prevent it from being passed on to the kid, but, but the kid will be given the tools to be able to work on it to prevent it from being passed on to the next generation. Um, wait, just before Zach goes into the practical, because yeah. this relates to like the more like the other half. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the first thought that I had when we were thinking was actually like very, very similar to what we're saying now. Yeah. And I was thinking of in the Rav's like mocks are on, and you actually recommended it to me. Yeah. I don't remember. I think like Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur, I don't remember which one. Yeah, he speaks about yeah. how um, like this idea that like, if you pass on negative things to your children or like literally like fates, then like that continues, like, I don't, I don't know how it works. Like I'm not Hashem, I have no idea. Like yeah. this sort of idea apparently is true with like the more like metaphysical sense. And I think also the practical sense, but apparently like it's a like idea in Judaism, especially when speaking about like, you know, fates and then like good things that we do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, good uh, supplement. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot more than what Mishle is going to talk about here. Uh, you know that that we should be aware of. Okay, Zach, uh, practical application. Um, yeah, so the practical application I think is twofold. Um, I think it's talking to the child and to the parent. Mm -hmm. It's saying to the child, don't expect. You know, like, you know, like I think it's it's common often that we hear people say like, oh, well, that was my parents' issue. I'm going to be different but then yeah. they don't actually put in any effort to be different and then they have the same flaw. Right. Um, and so it's basically highlighting like, no, if you're just another generation, then likely you, you won't have escaped that. You won't have cleansed that flaw from, from, you know, being passed on. Right. Um, and, and so it's kind of by, by saying that it's saying like, you need to actively, you know, just being a new generation isn't enough. You need to actively, uh, seek that flaw out and, and work on it. Yeah. Um, and then on the flip side, I think it's talking to the parents and saying like, yeah, yes, you may pass on flaws. Um, but what's more crucial than that is to pass on these 
let's say meta skills, you know, to, yeah. to learn from the tzaddik, meaning like the tzaddik, the tzaddik's offspring are escaping for a reason and you can imitate those reasons to the best of your abilities. You know, yeah. you could try to pass on as much of those skills as you can um, to help your offspring escape your flaws as well. Okay, good. Um, I want to uh, ask uh, uh, two questions, and I have answers uh, uh, based on your idea. But uh, I think I, I, so. The questions are: Why does the first half talk about a um, uh, ra as opposed to like a rasha, uh, which is the usual opposite of the tzaddik? And why does the second half talk about tzaddikim specifically and not, let's say, like chachamim? So, what do you say? I, again, uh, I have it. I, so yeah. I have to. I, I only have a quick thought on the first half. Um, yeah. The second one, I might need to take a moment to think, but uh, uh, the second question, but the first one is just because I think it's isolating a variable rather than a person. Um, mm -hmm. And it yeah. is in perhaps including the fact that Sadiqim can have flaws too. Okay, good, um, good. And, and we can all have flaws and it's not yeah. just like this Russia. Okay, alone. good. I, that's, that's what I would say also, right? So it's, it, it's, a, it's broader than something that is just a Russia. This occurs with anyone who has flaws. And that's why I use this generic term. And then I think for the, the reason why it says Tzadikim, and uh, I, I'm going to say this mostly based on, on, on observation, maybe. Um, not that I've had like a ton of observation here, but, you know, a Mishleik Chacham is going to be looking at like the consequences of his own actions. And so in parenting, he'll be looking at like, you know, how are my actions going to affect my child? But a Tzadik is going to be looking at it from a systemic perspective. And I feel that maybe it's just an intuition. I feel like you need the systemic perspective in order to really want to bequeath to your child these same like tools that we're talking about. Um, uh, in, in, in you know, like uh, in other words, hold on, how can I put it? Like a chacham is not necessarily going to go that far. But a tzaddik will because he cares about helping every person in the system thrive. That's my intuition. Um, interesting. I don't know that that's necessary for the idea, but I think it's an interesting point. Yeah, yeah. I also don't think it's necessary for the idea. I think it's just if we if we chose to focus on on the fact that it says tzaddikim specifically, then I I, I would think the answer is somewhere along those lines. All right. Let me just uh, write down Zach's idea in some form here. Okay. So. Um, so the puzzle is talking about the tendency to pass on flaws from one generation to the other. Okay. Uh, the first half, first half is saying, don't think that these flaws will somehow magically disappear. If they're, if you don't guard against passing them on, then they will likely get passed on, okay? Uh, the second half is saying that even though Tzadikim will also, uh, might also, might also pass on their flaws, okay? And I'm gonna put in parentheses, although they will certainly uh, uh, um, help their children avoid many flaws, right? Because they are going to do get rid of a lot of their own flaws, okay? So they might pass on the flaws. They will also pass on to their children the drive and skills needed to work on those flaws and to escape the harm that would come from them. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, good. Nice. Two ideas. Okay, I don't have a full idea, but I have a half idea. Okay, and I'll, I'll just, it's not even a half idea, just an approach. The first thing I saw when I, when I thought about the Pasuk is the scenario it's describing is, is that the first person, the person in the first half is trying to be exonerated and it's not working. And the person in the second half is not trying to be exonerated and it is working, right? So the first half is talking to someone who's trying to cleanse himself or exonerate or vindicate himself. And I, I, my intuition is like, he's using this method of Yad Liyad and it's saying, no, Yad Liyad is not going to cleanse you. It's not going to vindicate you. I don't know what that means, but that's like what it's saying. Second half is saying, you know, whatever the Tzaddik is doing 
is vindicating him. And not only is it vindicating him, it's also going to save his offspring. Okay. So the question is, what, how does that work? Can I, can I uh, go to my laundering, Sfara? Uh, is it in line with this? Yeah, I think so. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Um, well, it's not actually laundering, Sfara, but like, yeah, I, I, th- I think that maybe you could say that like, you know, you know, like, like, you know how like some people like to start fresh? Yeah. You know, um, you know, the only problem is like, you're not really starting fresh if you're the same person. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah, you might go to a new community, but like, you, you're gonna, you're gonna be the same person who you are. Yeah, you know, th- th- that doesn't change. So, like, your your wicked ways is not gonna be cleansed just because you 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 take one thing from Atomic Habits to change your scenario, it won't <laughs> work. Yeah, I saw. You know, I I, I can't remember. I have a page of Mepharshim in my mind that I saw over the last three days, and I don't know what it was Mepharshim on, but it said, it was saying this idea, and they quoted Chazal. I have no idea, yeah, I have no idea if this is Mishle, Tehillim, Rus, um, but uh, it was saying how, maybe it was Rus, I don't know, that there's a statement of Chazal, like, Mashanim Mako, Mashanim Mazel, you know, if you change your your, uh, location, then you change your luck. And then the uh, whoever, whichever the Mepharshim this was, he says, yeah, that's only if you actually like change yourself, you know, like if you make the same mistakes and you have the same foolishness in the new place, you're just going to create all the same types of problems that you had in the first place, you know? Yeah. Is this well, I like that approach. Idea? So that, that's, for, that's for the first half you're saying, right? That's some, somehow what we just said is in the Yad the Yad. And it's saying that that's not going to work to cleanse you because you're not actually changing yourself. Is that? Yeah, the yad, like, I think yad le yad could just mean you know you're 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 going into like like yad you know like when you grab onto something like it's in your control. Yeah. You know maybe like you're you go to a different town you know like that town has control over you in some form or like you you're in someone else's control so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I hear. Yeah, I feel like it's switching it up, you know, switching from one hand to another. I feel like that right. reads yeah. decently. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Switching it up is not going to cleanse you from Ra, right? Uh, switching your grip, right? Vizera Tzadik Nimlot. Okay, so so what, what would the second half be saying? Uh, why did they... Es- so first of all, so are they trying... Let, let's let's uh, put what I said on, on, on hold. So th- are sounds like... So are they trying to escape or are they just like getting this escape like as a as a bonus because the the offspring of Sadiqim. Can I say like a similar but different idea sure. on the yad the yad? Yeah. So and I think it also works ha- well with the second half. So could it be that it's not necessarily like it could be like changing community or whatever it is like that type of like idea, but could it also be like person? Like let's say like let's say like I don't know like they're trying to exonerate themselves like with this person or that person or like you know tie themselves to this new image through that person or like let's say. You know, if we're going back to the first idea of like a judge or whoever it is, like it doesn't have to be, but like, yeah. or fitting yourself into a new friend group or whatever, right. like at the end of the day, like you're like true. If you don't change yourself, like Ariel was saying, then you're going to be ending, like end up in the same situation that you were in, in the first place. And then right. in the second half that a Sadiq or like the offspring of a Sadiq doesn't need to go from person to person or from place to place because they're true to themselves and their ideas that we know, like have like fundamental truths to them Uh uh-huh so so i like the move of saying that yad liad would refer specifically to something having to do with a person that it's saying the zera of tzaddikim because of their relationship to tzaddikim will get out of this and i still want to elaborate on that but the person who's trying this method of yad liad through people that's not gonna that's not gonna work yeah meaning and i think but it works well with what ariel was saying because if you say like it's in a specific like community or a friend group. Like I, I would rather say like people in a community or a group in a community rather than a community. Cause I think that it works better with the actual like hand to hand. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could say yeah, go for ahead. the second half of the Pasuk that, um, you know, like Zara Tzadikim can just mean, you know, like other people viewing, you know, the offsprings of Tzadikim. Um, zero, say, just say it one more time. You know, when the Pasuk says Zara Tzadikim, like, like the yeah. offspring of Tzadikim, yeah. maybe it just means that, you know, it's how other people view them. 
or like their relationship to them. Because, okay, let me explain. Uh, because, um, you know, like the, like, like, like a tzaddik, right, has left, you know, great things in the world that has impacted individuals for, for the greater society and, and people will recognize that. Yeah. Right? Now, that's like the, that's like the mark that they have left. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, now people respect that. People, yeah. people will see that as a positive thing and they will, they will love them for it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could say that it was the, the offspring's, you know, father or mentor or, 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 or teacher or Rav or whatever, you know, um, maybe you could say that they, um, that because they're in that world, like they have some sort of credibility through their, uh, through their namesake. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you know, they may not even be looking to escape. It just happens to work out because of how other people interact with them. Okay, so either one of two things is happening. Either either I'm not catching your intuitive uh, uh, current or, or this is complicating the puzzle too much for me. Uh, I think that I, I think it was off on a good, a good, good track. And it I feels like back. it's a second approach. Yeah. Is. Yeah. It's, I don't think this is a, this is the same approach. Yeah. You don't think so? I don't think so. Yeah. Cause I was trying to ask your question about like, like how are they being like exonerated from whatever they're exonerating without even wanting to do that or. Yeah. You know. I, you know, I'm almost wanting to go here with the, um, with the uh, cleansed thing. Uh, that's that's how, how I was I was uh, inclined well, to do it. For him. Yeah. Well, one of the questions I had on what we were having on this approach is, um, meaning I get how like going to a new place but not changing yourself would not allow you to escape, but it seems like changing yourself and escaping. It seems like we would ju- why not just say it's sodding? Like what what is it about the offspring that right so that, that's why i think that the reason why it's highlighting the offspring is um they're not actively involved in this changing themselves they're just kind of like getting the fringe benefits uh of being raised in uh, by by tzaddik and, and i think the idea has to follow that yeah michael okay i have a different take okay go ahead i think this is an argument against ad populum can you meaning enlighten us? About ad, populum, ad populum is a uh, idea which someone says is true because many people agree with oh, it. Oh, bandwagon. It's a fallacy. fallacy. Okay. I, I know the yeah. uh, the the common the commoners uh, version of it. Yeah. So when it says yad liyad lo yinakera, it's saying no matter how many hands are in favor of this thing, mm. it doesn't cleanse the evil of it. Uh-huh. tzadikim, this small insignificant seed of a tzaddik that doesn't get wiped away. Meaning that's the surviving thing because it's true. Whereas if an evil thing happens to be supported, yad, liyad, liyad, uh-huh. however many, yeah. it's irrelevant. Okay. This is, this is a good, uh, good like Miri Derek Nistor approach that we're talking about, uh, about you know, truth itself. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I like that reading. It's, it's, it's a good reading. Um, zero to the end of the seed analogy also, like the, the, uh, uh, you know, see, uh, so you're saying the analogy of the seed is that's a very, very small thing that can, that, that can get buried, so to speak, but it's going to, because it has real growth power, it can actually like, uh, you know, turn into something so, real. So Mike, I actually like this and also want to remind you to write it if you want to track oh, yeah, the thanks. ideas. Yeah. Um, but I guess my question on that would be, um, why, why is it, what, like, what's the escape term uh like showing like why does it say escape rather than like sort of like survive grow like what's it escaping from or to i think the many hands of the wicked (laughs) meaning like the simplest analogy would be like nazi germany which had democratic support but regardless like you might have been a seed you might have been hiding in a basement the true good sadik that is the thing that survives and nazi germany has forgotten right yeah that's a good that's a good idea i was thinking um another example of this with the uh with socrates you know like athens turns against him to to kill him but like the socratic method that he planted 
you know, took off and changed all of the, uh, all, all of the, uh, you know, world history, you know, the, the trajectory of the world. So hold on a something small. So I've got, I'll just read this out loud because I'm talking, this is a warning against the bandwagon fallacy. No matter how many hands support a false quote unquote bad idea, that doesn't cleanse it from its badness. In contrast, the seat of the right, it's i.e. something small, but with real uh, uh, good and vitality will ultimately escape from the, the majority, the, the, uh, the evil majority and uh, flourish. Okay, yeah, not my, not my style of a Michelet idea, but I like the idea though. Okay, let's do this now. Uh, not, not that I'm giving up on the approach we were taking, but let's look at some of our, just see what, what they say here. And uh, I, let's see, okay. So I'm gonna show you the Matus David because he's just the simplest to read, okay? Will we get an idea? We'll find out. Okay, Yad Liad. Miyado shall A lot of Mufarshim say this. It's talking about the the hand of God. Okay, Yavo uh, Hagmul Liad So the first hand is the hand of God to the hand of the person who is liable. Okay, Miyado um, shall Yavo Hagmul Liad So from the hand of God will come retribution to the hand of the of the one who's liable. Velo Yanaki Harami Menu, and the evil will not be cleansed from him. Kilo Tashu Vrekam. Because it will not go back uh, empty-handed. In other words, um, sorry, not cleanse. The evil person will not escape from it because it will not go back empty-handed. In other words, when God is, when you're going to get a divine punishment, then it's going to happen no matter what. Um, what about tshuva? I don't know. Okay. Of all zera tadikim lifamim nimlatu min hara'a asher yishulach alehim, but the offspring of tadikim sometimes they will escape from the evil that is sent upon them because of the merit of the worthiness of the actions of their fathers. Now, obviously you could take this in a very superficial uh, magical point system way, right? That like, if God wants to punish you, then, then he's going to zap you no matter what, you know, you can't escape that lightning bolt. Uh, and, um, and if you're the Zerah of a Tzadikim, then, oh, look, you know, somehow the Zuchus of the Tzadik will, will be like a shield. Okay. Only problem is that life is not a point system and we'll, we wouldn't learn any ideas from it if, if, if it was. So the question is, can we like understand what this is really getting at here? Uh, like in, in like real cause and effect, preferably Michelaic terms. Wait, and you know, just, yeah. Let, let, me, let me type out the translation because it's so short. So we could just look at it here. Okay, so Matsuz David says, um, from the hand of God will come retribution to the hand of the one who is liable, and he will not uh, escape, uh, uh, he will not be escape from that harm because it, i.e., divine punishment will not uh will not miss its target i'm just saying miss its, its, its target because uh low touch means it won't return empty but that sounds weird okay but the offspring of the righteous will sometimes escape from the harm that is sent against them on account of the merit of the worthiness of the deeds of their fathers Okay, and our question is, how can we understand this in a way that actually makes sense and is not just a like, these are the rules. You know, pull out that credit card, you know, get credits, get points from your uh, Avos point system and uh, redeem them for escape, get out of jail free. Like, that's not, that's not how the God I worship works. Can we understand it like beyond just like, you know, like the discuss of the like our forefathers, meaning like I think that we've actually spoken about this. Like there is this idea of like having merit from our forefathers. Like that's already the first Brock and Shimon Esrei. But I yeah. also think like could we just combine it with something we were saying like previously and say something like like I don't remember who was saying this at this point, but that there we there is that idea. But I think also like we could get the benefits of their like worldviews and you know meadows or whatever you want to say because we're coming from like the same train of thought like let's say yeah. like look at like the jewish thought and you know value system versus a completely different religion or whatever it is right okay yeah i i, I agree with you yeah and, and i i think uh the, 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 my mind's uh, starting to percolate already whether it is for the second half yeah isaiah i guess this is a little bit different but maybe you could say like 
like Hashem judges people on like different judges people not only individually but also like in groups like he judges yeah. judges nations he judges you know he judges like uh cities and whatnot so maybe he also judges people in terms of like like judging you personally might be a judgment to you but it's also a judgment to like your family so if your right. family is one that doesn't necessarily like deserve this so then maybe on like that Ashkafa's level you know it doesn't make sense to judge you even though personally it might make sense to judge you so like we can't maybe judge Hashem's judgment from like an only individual perspective Okay, I agree with the idea. Something about this, the way you, you express it for the second half sounds to me like the opposite of what the second half is saying, but maybe I'm just misunderstanding you because the second half, the way I'm reading the materials sounds like it's saying the family will deserve it, but because of the their their avos, then God will uh, will will save them from it. Well, I'm saying like the individual does, I don't know if he means like avos, like specifically ancient right. forefathers, like it yeah, could yeah. mean his actual father, like he deserves to die, but his father doesn't deserve to lose his child. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like, so okay, the, right. the family is judged in a certain, also yeah. like taken into consideration. Yeah. Okay. I, I hear that. Right. In other words, Zuchus of the Avos might mean that you are going to be related to as an object, not as a person. <laughs> you know, you are, uh, you know, you are a human being, but you are also the son of parents and those parents, you know, are, are going to be affected by, uh, by, by your loss. Yeah, I hear that. I, I want to go back to what Rivki's saying, uh, just to articulate a, an idea here. So maybe it's saying like this, okay? I'm going to actually explain the second half first, because that, that uh, that, that's clear to me. So hold on. No, no, I'm going to explain the whole thing. I'm going to try to explain the whole thing. Okay, so um, the first half is saying basically that if you are deserving a certain um, uh, onesh, a certain punishment, you will get it. Okay. So let's just, let's just use Mishlaic examples for this. Okay. Let, let's say you, um, let's use classic Mishlaic example. Let's say like you, uh, you cheat in, in, uh, in business and um, you cut corners here and there or whatever, you know, and, uh, and then you get, you get caught. Okay. So that is going to happen no matter what. And don't count on the fact, like, again, this is always the mistake people make. They think that if they, like I'm going to be the exception. Like I can get out of this. I can escape it. And saying no, that's not how Mishpat Hashem works. The the it's a system of lawfulness. And and yeah, like for that guy, he might get caught the first time. This guy might get caught the fiftieth time. But like these things, you know, there is lawfulness in the universe. And like the 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 consequences of bad decisions catch up to you. Okay, but so what the second half is saying is a chiddush, which is like this: if you are just an individual. Or if you don't have, uh, you know, avos, and I'm going to use all avos in the broadest sense here. Avram Yitzchak Yaakov, good parents, good teachers, like we were saying earlier. Like avos can mean, you know, um, anyone who's responsible, like for for how you exist, whether it's like biologically, you know, how you were raised, or like uh, intellectually, right? So you have good avos. So you're going to get the bad thing. However, the fact that you have that you partake of the worldview of, of those avos could change the way you relate to that bad thing and diminish the badness from it. You know, like we say on, on Russia on Yom Kippur that Utschuva, Utfila, Utsdaka, Ma'aviri, and Roa Hagzera. I think I did a podcast episode on this about it. it doesn't mean that they remove the bad decree, it's that they remove the badness of the decree. Like you still get the decree, but you, you relate to the decree in a different way in that it removes the badness. So let's say, for example, you have someone who, um, who uh, you know, as a result of their actions, like, uh, uh, you know, goes bankrupt, okay? So that's the bad decree. But there's going to be a difference in the way that a Zera Avraham goes bankrupt and in the way that, like, a, a random uh, human being goes bankrupt. Random human being is just going to be flailing around in whatever values they have, and it's going to increase their suffering. They're probably going to make you know, continue to make bad decisions about it. But someone who's a Zerah Avram will take this event, use it as an opportunity for tshuva, reflect on it in the framework of tzedakah, you know, and like use it as an opportunity to, uh, to like grow from it and to diminish the badness that otherwise would have happened if they just like defaulted to their emotional reactions, you know? So, so that's what I, I think like 
So you are, so in other words, you're not escaping the thing that happens to you. You're escaping the badness of the thing that happens to you. And it's, and it could happen to you, not even because of your own, like, you know, Bechira, like obviously at the end of the day, it's your own Bechira, but it's the framework that you were raised in is going to, uh, you know, and, and, and the merits that you were, that you were, uh, uh, that you were raised with is going to affect the way that, that this, that, that the bad thing, uh, happens to you and diminishes badness. Yeah. Rifki. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I really, really like that idea. It's like very EOV, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was also going to say, like, I think that that's like the best case scenario. I think that right if you're able to like recognize that and come to, you know, chuva or, you know, refine yourself or whatever it is, like, that's amazing. But I think even on a more like basic level that I feel like the badness of the punishment will be diminished even by just recognizing, like, right. even if you're not at the point of chuva, like recognizing like, okay, like this isn't like against me personally, right. like, exactly. I feel like a lot of people take it very personally. So right. like just even lessening that, like, you know, um, like, psychological pain is yeah. a big thing here. Definitely. Yeah. And I've just, and I extend that to all levels. In other words, there's many, many, many levels you can get this on. Like the lowest level is just recognizing that this is a punishment from God, you know, that itself. And that God is, it only does good. Like that itself is like a, uh, 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 uh something that is, is part of the Zuchusavos, you know, um, and, uh, and will benefit you. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So just to clarify, um, what would be the practical advice from this way of reading the Pasuk? So I think the practical advice is, uh, is that, you know, any person when something befalls them can either relate to it via, they could either relate to it in a vacuum or they could relate to it via the schools of their avos, you know, and everyone, you know, who Mishle is, um, is talking to has, Zuchus from at least one of, and that's Shlomo Hamel, <laughs> you know, like that, um, that, that, like, it was like this. I, I feel like a lot of times when bad stuff happens, you do feel like you're on your own, you know, like that's part of the, the, the depressed mentality. Like this is just happening to me. And like, I just, you know, like, like I'm on my own and we it, initially is guiding you to look to the Avos. And again, whether this is obviously called Yaakov, your personal Rebbeim, you know, Rambam, uh, you know, uh, Pirkei Avos, Shlomo Melech, you know, look to the Avos to, um, to find the perspectives and perfections and, 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 and clarity to cope with the thing that's happening to you in a way where you can diminish the bad, you know, it's directing you where, where to learn from and, and to not just accept not just say like, oh, this is a bad thing that's happening to me. That's it. I can't do anything, you know? And again, I'm, this is not my, this is also not my style of Mishle idea, you know? And I can't even guarantee that this is what Mitsuas David means. I'm just saying like the, 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 the principles of Hashgaka that Mitsuas David is spelling out, this is how I understand them. Uh, uh, so I, that, that, that's, that's all I can say for that. Like, according to me, I don't think this is the type of idea that Mishle says. I think this is the type of idea that Tehillim or Eov says, you know? Um, but, because uh, I don't think Mishle really deals with how to take divine judgment, but, you know, trying to understand what he's saying here. So, saying it's God punishing you, then that, that's where I'm going to go. Okay, should we do uh, another one? Um, let's see here. Uh, I didn't read all of these yet. Um... Okay. Um, okay, Rabini Yona had an interesting one. Okay, and I'm going to read it from my my uh, better Rabini Yona here, just so I can get the uh, get this correct. So he says, so he translates it completely differently than everyone. Yad liyad lo yinake. Yad means chelak. Yad means portion. Okay, where do we see that? Milashin Hamesh Yados. Okay, so if you see by um, Binyamin, I think, right? So it says, uh, when Yosef uh, had not yet revealed himself to his brothers, it says, Vayisa Mas Os Meis Panav Alehem. This is in Brachis uh, 43 34. Uh, he had portions carried to them from before him and the portion of Binyamin was five times larger than the portions of all the rest. So that's Hamesh Yados, five times larger. Okay, and then the other example Rabin Yona gives is from Daniel. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, interesting. Huh. My 
Rabina Yona is different than this one. No, it's not. It's just coined the wrong Pasuk. Esser Yados. Okay, maybe there's two references. I went to the Daniel one. So in Daniel, uh, it says, in all the matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, this is Daniel and his buddies, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters. So yados here means like times, but like quantity, like they say 10x nowadays, you know? Um, okay, so so what is he saying? Vagmul yakare chelek, okay? Retribution or reward is called a portion. Uh, and he says, Zechelek Shoseno. Okay, I'm, I'm not familiar with that passage. Viado Chilkata Lahem. Okay, I'm not familiar with that either. Vabhira Shiyivkar Ha'adam, and the choice that a person makes, Gam Kain Tikari Chelek. It's also called a Chelek. So he's, he's giving it, okay, so let's just repeat. So he's saying, Yad means, means like amount, okay? And reward also means amount. And what a person chooses is also called a Chelek. Okay, let's see what his idea is. The idea is when God apportions to his created beings, to his creations, the portion of their actions, meaning like the retribution of their actions, and he brings them to judgment for their choices. Okay, meaning I guess he gives them what they what what the consequences are of their choices. Uh, the uh, person who chooses evil. So he will not be uh, exonerated. God will not overlook any of his faults. And he will not be redeemed from any of his sins because he chose bad. As it says, uh, he will... Um, okay, he's buyer. All right, he's going to explain that. All right. Uh, the zera tzadik mi malet, but the offspring of tzadik will escape. The tzadik lo es nafsho levadi malet. Not only will he uh, make his own soul escape, ki gam zaro nimlat b'tikaso. His offspring will also escape with his righteousness. Vi kanis lo Hashem lefni mishir zedin, and God will relate to him beyond the letter of the law. Okay, so he's also taking this as it's about God, and he's saying basically that similar to the idea we we're saying before, but just through different words. He's saying that um, how is he reading the pasuk? Yadli yad lo inakeh. It sounds like he's saying like, almost like saying measure for measure. You know that that he will not escape any amount of ra that he deserves. You know, you have any sort of ra that you did, you're going to get exactly what you deserve for that ra. And so God's going to be medactic with you and hold you to the exact quantity. But with the offspring of tzaddikim, he's going to relate to them beyond the letter of the law and give them more leeway than they deserve, which does not sound fair. <laughs> so what is this saying? That's a hard one. Let me just glance at that puzzle he was quoting uh, and see if I can get anything from that uh, 12 2. Uh, I'm not going to read it out loud. I'm just going to skim it. I just had an idea. Yeah, hold on. Just one second. We should be. Keep on myself some rows. Sonny with my business. Motors. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it, it might be too, it might be on too thin of an ice connection, but um, I, I, it sounds like he's not saying specifically like they're getting judged more favorably than they deserve. He's just saying that they're getting judged uh, beyond the, the strict letter of the law. Correct. Um, right. And so I, it, it reminds me of it. I don't know where this is sourced. I've just heard this uh, multiple times that the tzaddik, the son of a tzaddik, is more righteous oh, yeah. than the tzaddik, the son of a Russia. I've and, heard stuff like that also. <laughs> and that I, I, I've heard that one. I, I think that's explanation. from um, that's from where Rivka was davening for um, uh, for to have a child. Yeah, and he tells Yitzchak. Yes, look, you should dive in because your father is Avram. My father was like uh, Basul, Russia. Right. Mm. Yeah, I think that's where I've seen it also. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and one of the explanations I heard for it, um, maybe there's others, but is that the to be the son of, to, to be righteous son of a Russia, you just need to reject everything 
and just run in the opposite direction. But mm. to to be the tzaddik, the son of a tzaddik, you need to accept and still somehow develop yourself independently um, within, uh, w- while you're, 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 it's almost like less of a clear direction because you're not just running opposite, you're accepting it, but making it your own, which is mm. a unique challenge. Um, whereas when you're running in the opposite direction, everything is your own. Okay, um, it, the, 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 I, I'm going to just interject to say even further, I think there's an additional challenge that a tzaddik ben tzaddik has is that there's a natural, there's going to be a natural rebellion to the way that you were raised. And so when you, if you're a Russia ben Russia and you rebel against that, you can only go up, you know, <laughs> but uh, theoretically, but if you're rebelling against a tzaddik, uh, that upbringing, I mean, that's a real conflict and a real struggle. You know, I, I've seen, I've seen, to, you know, uh, children of tzaddik and struggle with this. Right, right. Yeah. And to, to figure out how to use those, you know, rebellious tendencies to come out ahead, you yeah. know, is, is, is a challenge. And so it could be that he's saying that they're getting judged beyond the letter of the law because they deserve it. Yeah. Right. That's interesting. That, that's a good interpretation that avoids my problem saying that it's unfair. Right. Uh, so it's, it's interesting. So what it turns out is that in both cases, God is judging you based on entirely on your actions, right? But in case of the Russia, your actions, God's holding you exactly to account for every Bukhir choice that you make. And for the Tzaddik, he's judging you based on all of your actions, but because your actions require you to develop further if you're the son of a Tzaddik, then you're going to get like a better judgment. That's a good idea. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's... my only question on that though, yeah. sorry to, to jump back in, is, is, is what's the practical advice again meaning like yeah what i know right us. yeah it, it's it's uh i i what I, I like about a lot of the ideas from before or all the ideas really is that it's not talking to the offspring of a tzaddik this idea feels like it's talking to the offspring of a tzaddik you know yeah it's like what if your uh parents aren't uh a tzaddik or a russian it's just an amaris right right um, us, you know like yeah yeah like am i screwed or like no, no, it's not your screw. You just don't get this this particular benefit, you know. I know. I mean, I want the benefit. Well, well, your dad should have been a tzaddik. <laughs> no, but no, yeah. I mean, that that's uh, that is. I'll tell that to God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you um just? I don't even know if it was Rabinu or Zach. Can you just repeat like the last idea we said? Yeah. In fact, I'll do better than that. Um, I will write it and summarize it there also. And I realize I didn't do the Matsudas yet either. Matsudas David. We'll do that afterwards. Rabinu. Yona. Okay, so he's saying that um, uh, the pasuk emphasizes emphasizes that Hashem will will uh, uh, will give you the exact retribution that you, as an individual, deserve. Okay, in the Ru- Russia's case, he will hold him accountable. Uh, for each, each and every uh, free will decision he makes for evil, and and uh, he will receive whatever he deserves. Okay, the offspring of the tzaddik, however, faces an additional. Cha- oh, sorry. You want? I gotta incorporate the thing about the Zach said about the Russia. Um, the Russia has a benefit over the sorry yeah the the russia is being held accountable for not turning away from evil okay the offspring of the tonic however face an additional challenge uh so additional challenges yeah i'll say a, an additional challenge which is to resist the impulse to rebel against the righteousness righteousness of his fathers and to i'll use the fancy psychological term individuate individuate um by by um finding his own path of righteousness beyond or aside from what his parents did and that will earn him additional merit from Hashem because he's finding his own path and he's overcoming his yeter to rebel against it. So I, I have a, 
an answer, but then a follow up question. Okay. Um, so as far as like the practical ramification is, it could be I, in, I think it was in the previous idea you were saying how like there, it, it could be answering like this feeling of like being alone in one's struggles. Yeah. So like here, I, I feel like it's, it, it's, it, it, there might be a like, um, you know, like a sister emotion of like feeling some kind of injustice. Like, is this, you know, when things don't feel fair, it can be hard to, um, you know, put your all into the game, so to speak, yeah. you know? So by explaining how it's, you know, each person is going to be judged in accordance to their situation, so to speak, it can help people, um, understand how things are fair than they realize which can help them um you know put in more uh you know effort right. um you know into succeeding my only question on that is if that's the idea it it, it seems like a bizarre way for shlomo amela to go about writing that idea yeah yeah and it's, i'm still bothered also by the the audience he's addressing you know like it does sound like this idea lends itself to saying like, oh, you should be the offspring of Tzadikim because you're going to get a living mistress of Din judgment, but... Right, which is obviously an impossible piece of advice yeah, right, to give right. anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe it's saying that like, oh, you should be a Tzadik so your offspring has this uh, benefit. That is interesting. I mean, that that's a good point. Yeah, but... I was uh, kind of half kidding when I just said it. No, like... no, I mean, it, it, it's funny though because like um, uh, it... It, 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 it seems like a very far removed reason to be a tzaddik, you know? Yeah. Well, people care about their legacy and maybe they, do, they yeah. project onto their children and like they want their children to like, I don't know, I don't know, it's whatever yeah. parents obsess about. Well, maybe, maybe it's like, I don't know if I saw this in some, from some Marvel writer or something, but I think they said something along the lines of like the difference between a hero and a villain is that a villain takes all their pain and tries to, you know, mirror it back onto others and make other people feel that pain. And a hero takes that pain and tries to prevent others from feeling the same pain they felt. Uh -huh. So maybe this is like saying like, here's this benefit. And if you didn't have it, then maybe you can offer that benefit to your yeah to your offspring <laughs> it definitely it definitely is a good idea but i just you know I, I also feel i think what we're all feeling which is that it's a weird way for the puzzle to say that weird thing to yeah write about. Yeah, yeah definitely all right so let's do this um let's just uh, uh i think i'm uh, uh I, this is a good haul tonight uh you know i feel like whenever i uh you know, whenever we're done with the, the puzzle, I feel like I'm, I'm coming back from like the fishing village. And like, I feel like today I've got like a, a huge net full of big fish, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, so let's actually start with Matus David because that's the only one we didn't uh, review yet. And then we'll re review the other one. So Matus David said basically that um, uh, the first half is saying, uh, is reminding, reminding the Russia that there's no escaping the retribution of Hashem, and we said that that means the consequences of your of your your bad decisions. Um, the second half is saying that even though there's no escape, escape, um, there is a reality to the merit of uh, the of one's fathers. Okay, in that the the beneficial perspectives that you inherited from your fathers can um, uh, diminish the, the badness of the divine decree. Um, and- Is it more clear if we say the experienced badness? Yeah, the experienced badness of the divine decree. And, um, and therefore you should avail yourself of that of that merit by looking for it and applying it yeah um okay so that was the matus david isaiah and rifki's idea was the puzzle is talking to someone who's judging someone in a court or judgment scenario and saying don't uh maintain a biased view of a person who used to be bad and uh and changed himself 
uh, like don't continue to view him as bad. And same thing, if someone is the offspring of Tzadikim, don't let them off the hook or view them as, as good simply because they descended from Tzadikim. Look at each person based on where they are. Um, Zach's idea was saying that this is talking about the passing on of flaws from one generation to the other. So on the one hand, that's a natural thing. If you don't work on a flaw, then it's going to be passed on. By the way, after we do this, I'm going to stop the recording and then I'll give you an example of this that I heard uh, over the weekend. Um, and uh, um, so that's going to automatically happen um, unless you work on yourself. And um, uh, the tzaddikim, not only will they prevent lots of flaws from going on to their kids, but even the flaws that they don't prevent from going on to their kids, they will equip their kids with the tools that they need to be able to work on the flaws themselves, and that will will minimize uh, their their harm. And so that's a, that's a benefit from uh, uh, tzaddik driven tzaddik driven parenting. Michael took the metaphorical idea that this is um, yad liad lo yinake ra is talking about um, no matter how many hands are are supporting uh, uh, falsehood or evil it's not going to change the uh it's not going to override the reality of the evil and the the uh the the you know the badness of it um uh you know it's bad, goodness badness is not determined by the majority uh and in contrast this the seed of the righteous which is truth will escape that because it will prevail and like a seed that finds its way into the ground will you know sprout and flourish and then rabiniona has this idea that we didn't fully develop which is that um that God judges each person according to their Bechira. The Rasha's Bechira, the Rasha is inclined to think that, oh, there are certain decisions that I make that will be ignored or that I can, I can escape the consequences from. So he needs to be told, no, every single decision that you do, you'll be held to account for. And the offspring of Tzadikim might face this uphill battle of like living up to the, the image of, a, you know, to the, to the level of the Tzadik and like, fighting with their their impulses to rebel against it or like needing to like differentiate and strike out on their own path and they're being reminded that that in reward for that then they're going to get more than what the tzaddikim uh uh than than the ordinary tzaddik in a vacuum would have gotten from just regular righteousness because they're they're, they have a greater struggle and greater challenge in that sense okay good haul okay um i'm going to stop the recording now uh let me i'll pause in case we recording yeah. Okay. So this is not directly related to the Pasuk, I don't think, but it's about Michelin in general. And then Zach just reminded me of it because he was talking about meta skills. Uh, this is a spoiler alert for uh, Wednesday's episode of the Stoke Jew podcast. Um, uh, so Seneca says, uh, wool takes on certain colors at once, while others it will not absorb unless it has been repeatedly soaked in them and boiled. In the same way, there are other systems of thought that are minds once they have understood them, can immediately put into practice. But the system of which I am speaking, unless it goes deep and sits for a long time and has not just tinged the mind but dyed it, does not fulfill its promises. Okay, so just to repeat the muscle, right? So I, I don't know really how wool dyeing works. I assume if you take white wool and you put it in black ink, it will instantly dye it black, okay? But with red dye, I've heard that you need to like dye it many, many, many times for it to like stick, okay? I don't know, whatever. So that, that's the muscle, right? So certain schools of thought, or sorry, certain like yeah, systems of thought, you could get instant ideas and just directly apply them, okay? Other schools of thought, you need to, to seep yourself in it for a long time before it has any effect. Mishle is interesting in that it has both, is that Mishle gives you, in certain psukim, ideas that you can just directly apply, okay? But then there's also a certain Mishlaic way of thinking that only develops after you've learned many, many, many psukim. And I think that's where a lot of the meta skills like rely. Like I think, you know, in, I, I think Rifki has the best exposure to this, like in, in high school when we did Mishlay moments, you know, you know, where I would encourage students to like, you know, bring up in class instances where they saw ideas that we learned play out in the real world. So I think early on, Michelin moments are literally seeing like, oh, that Pusuk we learned, you know, that specific Pusuk, I saw this idea in, in real life. And that's how you first start off. That's like how a Michelin uh, Chacham sees things where he's like dependent on other, you know, received knowledge. But then at a certain point, you, you develop a skill of Michelin thinking in general, and you expand it beyond the Pusukim that like you, uh, that, that, that you've read. And in fact, hold on, I saw another, another uh, uh, Stoic quote. I haven't made an episode about this yet, but I was thinking about doing it soon. 
that I was thinking about initially in, in regards to this. Hold on. So he's this is a Seneca. Yeah, Seneca talking about Mishlei, not about Proverbs, okay, but about like, maxims, about like sayings. He says, that is why we give children, I'll just use the word Proverbs because maxims is weird. That is why we give children Proverbs to learn by heart because a child's mind can grasp them uh, when it can't yet handle more. But for a grown man whose progress is definite, it is disgraceful to cling to gems of rhetoric to prop himself up with the best known and briefest sayings to depend on for his memory. For by now, he should be relying on himself. He should make such Proverbs and not memorize them. You know, so when you when you get to a certain point of internalizing Mishlei, I mean, we're going to be like learning from Shlomo's Mishlei for a while. You get to a certain point, you start to generate the Proverbs because you've internalized Mishlei thinking. But that requires like a, a dying of the wool and repeated dying of the wool and like immersing yourself in Mishlei learning, which is why like of all the types of learning that you can do, you know, I advocate for like daily Mishlei learning if you can if you can hack it, you know. Um, that, uh, that, or as close to daily as possible, because it's not like, you know, it was like this, here's how I would put it. It's tempting to think of Mishle as a quantitative phenomenon. So if I go to, if I learn Mishle once a week, I get one idea per week. If I learn it, if I go to five times per week, I get five ideas per week, you know? So there is a quantitative phenomenon of Mishle, but really it's a qualitative phenomenon is keeping your mind in Mishle mode and immersing it in Mishlei mode on, on a daily basis will keep you being able, it'll keep training you in seeing things through a Mishlei way. And that's not just quantitative. The quantity will produce that, that quantity, that, 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 that the, sorry, the quantity will produce that quality of strength. Uh, and I think that that's a benefit of like learning Mishlei as much as possible. Frequently as possible, yeah. Okay. Thanks for helping us do that. Yeah, yeah, my, thank you, thank you. Know, the feeling is mutual. I mean, look, we all we all came up with the ideas tonight, so so it's uh, it's good. Um, alrighty, uh, until until next time. Um, um, wait, or, yeah. you, I was just asking if you can send the uh, I don't even know what to call them. My brain is fried. The responses, ideas, whatever. I just like miss some uh, of them. the summaries. That's a good. Okay, way. sure. I'll post them. <laughs> in the, uh, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll post them in the thing. When is the last Monday night Mishlishir from you? Um, 